My coverage of Computex 2017 is brought to you by MSI, EVGA, Tesoro, G-Skill, and Cooler Master. All right, guys, I've made my way over to the MSI booth at the convention center. MSI is, of course, a sponsor. They have laptops, they have X299 motherboards, and they got a cool little tiny computer that runs VR all by itself. So uh, let's take a look. All right, guys, moving down the line. Here is the MSI GT83 VR Titan SLI. This is a massive uh, laptop, and we actually initially covered this back at CES. So you've probably seen this before. Now, MSI has done a revision of this. They've gone inside and redone some of the internals just to help things keep uh, running a little bit cooler. And for the GTX 10 series support for GPUs in here, they've also apparently come up with a new revision for those, again, just keeping things running a little bit cooler so you can maintain uh, higher clock speeds. Of course, this is going to ship with like really high-end Intel hardware, 7th gen, uh, GTX 1080 8GB, 18.4 inch, full HD, 1920 by 1080 screen, and uh, just pretty beastly computer. And uh, obviously, mechanical switches. Uh, these are Cherry switches, and it's now available with Cherry MX Silver. Let's move on down the line to the G. GT73 EVR Titan. If you find this in the US, it might just be listed as the GT73 VR Titan. But this is a gaming laptop which is also capable, fully capable, of supporting a VR experience. Now, another thing MSI is showing off along with these laptops is some of the actual internals. They've done uh, breakouts of those that show all the heat pipe designs. They use additional heat pipes, especially in the thin and light designs, to make sure, again, everything is running cool. Uh, so this one has the Cooler Boost Titan technology, as MSI is calling it. This also has a 120 hertz panel in here for gaming. Now, officially, this does not have uh, G-Sync support yet, but it is G-Sync capable. Uh, there's just some uh, final confirmations awaiting that. But from what I understand, you can do G-Sync with this particular setup. It can ship with the GTX 1070, and that is a big upgrade from the last gen, which only had a GTX 1060. Uh, and then again, 120 hertz refresh rate, five millisecond screen, we're also going to have three millisecond screens that are available for this and other variants in the future. Uh, so it's going to be available in up to a 3840 by 2160 4K IPS panel uh, with 100% Adobe RGB. So a couple different variants there, whether you're focused on gaming or whether you're focused on content creation, uh, depending on what you, you want to do, uh, go for one or go for the other. The, the higher fresh rate one is for gaming, in case you didn't know. Next, we got the GS73 VR Stealth Pro, and the GT GS73 uh, is a thin and light. It's it's super thin, uh, so not as deep as say the uh, GE73 that's a little bit further down the line. But they've also managed to wedge the GTX 1070 in here, and this is with the uh, apparently slightly revised GTX 1070 that uh, Nvidia has been working on. Again, just to keep things a little bit cooler uh, when it's running in uh, laptop environments to make sure they can maintain slightly higher clock speeds. Now the keyboards for these GT73 models uh, are RGB zone lit, so you can do different zones of RGB lighting. This one just lit up in red right now, but it can do uh, different RGBs. But the GE73 VR Raider, that's just right here, has individual RGB LEDs. So here, as you can see, lots of different colors can be displayed. Uh, these all have aluminum alloy chassis, by the way. Uh, and then again, the exclusive MSI Cooler Boost 5 technology for the GPU and the CPU, which includes additional heat pipes. Uh, I'll show you guys that in just a second. Also, MSI has been continuing to put like crazy RAID setups in these laptops. So you can have a Super RAID 4 offering. Uh, it gives you up to 3,300 megabytes per second of performance on your SSD RAID configuration with NVMe support. Again, per key RGB, RGB lighting here on the keyboard. And then they actually have these massive speakers, uh, which you can't see right now, but let me see if I can show you. They're, they're on the bottom. I can lift this up, try not to break it. There they are. So yeah, they, they got this crazy speaker array that kind of sits at the, at the bottom. Uh, they're calling it upgraded giant speakers. The sound is by Dyne Audio though, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and I can tell you, even though we're on a show floor right now and it's really loud, I can still hear these speakers playing this demo, so uh, that's kind of cool. So over here, as promised, they have the uh, sort of broken out cooling solutions for the different series of laptops they have. The GE Radiator over, over on the right, They're using additional heat pipes to keep uh, key components cool. The GPU, as well as the CPU, got seven heat pipes, four for the GPU and three for the CPU on the GE Radiator series. The GS series right here, which is a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner, not quite as powerful, so not quite as many heat pipes are required, but you got triple fans in there, keeping everything cool. Uh, apparently they have 41 fan blades, which, you know, more fan blades, that's, that's always better, right? Uh, this is a little bit thinner and lighter one, though, the GS63 VR Stealth Pro is what we're taking a look at right here. 
Uh, and then here's a, a really, really beastly laptop. This is a GT75 BR Titan SLI. And since this is another laptop that's going to ship with a high-end Intel Core i7 7th gen processor as well as a GTX 1080 in there, uh, you got 10 heat pipes in this one. It's a much thicker laptop, so you'll notice there are also much thicker fans that are included there. And uh, 10 plus is actually the heat pipes that they're listing. But nice that they actually busted out with the uh, exploded views of the laptops here for people so that they can take a look and see how these are cooled internally. Now apart from that cooling solution, this GT75 VR Titan SLI also has a mechanical switch keyboard. Now these are not uh, cherry switches like the previous mechanical switch keyboard that we've seen from MSI before. Wouldn't tell me exactly the brand for these, but I did try them out. They're super nice. They also don't have uh, quite as much travel as the full-size keys, but they're definitely a lot more than what you would get with this typical laptop keyboard. So uh, this one also comes with the Killer multi gig with killer shield. I don't even, I don't even know what that is. It's got to be something to do with the Nick. I have to imagine. Uh, rapid mechanical RGB keyboard though that is done by Steel Series. Uh, so I have to imagine they have something to do with the switches that are going in there as well. And then again, you have three different screens that this might be available with. 17.3 uh, inch Full HD that's 120 hertz and G-Sync compatible. Or 17.3 inch 1920 by 1080 with IPS. Or 17.3 inch 4K also with IPS. It's a few more laptop models. This is the GE62 VR Camo Squad Limited Edition. So uh, if you're into Digi Camo, and don't get me wrong, I don't blame you if you're not, uh, then this is certainly the laptop for you. It's got Digi Camo all over the front all over the back, all over the keyboard, uh, and this particular package, uh, which will be available in the U.S., you get the DigiGamo version of this, you also get like a backpack and a bunch of stuff that matches, you also get a copy of Ghost Recon, and uh, you get a season pass for Go Ghost Recon, a $210 value, wonderful, of course you have to like DigiCam, and I don't blame you if you don't. World of Tanks fans, any of you guys in the U.S., sorry. This one's not available there. It's the World of Tanks version of that same one. Here's that tiny little computer I was talking about, the Vortex G25. Now, you guys might have remembered from CES, MSI had a uh, tiny little computer all integrated that looked a lot like a trash can. They've redesigned that. They're calling it the G25 because it's about 25 millimeters thick. Uh, so you can look at it from side to side. So, super, super tiny. You can uh, have it vertically oriented, as you can see here, or you can uh, position it on its side. There's uh, plenty of ventilation uh, on, the, on the opposite side of it, as well as even some LEDs inside there. Uh, again, the MSI Cooler Boost Titan technology, the same kind of technology they're using to cool their laptops, is in here, uh, which allows them to keep a Core i7 7th gen processor. Different varieties are available, of course. A GTX 1070 and everything cool in there. They also got Thunderbolt support. And they were using this, uh, this little computer to power a VR experience that they have over in another area of their booth. They've actually uh, done some home-built designs for some active uh, racing pod seats that you can sit in. They have hydraulics or, or whatever that's pushing the seats around for the VR experience. All reactive, so they said they're going to make those and sell them. I'm not sure. It looks a lot of fun. Uh, Jenny and Joe both jumped in and I had a little tryout playing the racing games. I'm not sure what they can see in there, but they do look like they're having fun. And uh, I, I'm curious to see if MSI actually brings these racing seats to the market, because it's a lot of fun, but they tend to be expensive. I'd be curious to see what MSI's take on that is. So I have been cut off by the Linus Media Group team, but uh, we're going to press on and attempt to do some coverage of the X299 offerings from MSI, because of course Intel's uh, Core X series of processors now is available. This is the X299 X Power Gaming AC. Oh my god, look how much M.2 you can attach to this thing. Of course, if you have the right, uh, not a KB-Link X processor, processor, if you have a Skylink X processor with 44 PCIe lanes, you can connect up lots of stuff to it. So uh, they've actually added a riser card here with a dual M.2 configuration to supplement the three M.2 card uh, positions that they have on the board itself. One, two, and three here. They've also got some swing out M.2 protector unit things that they are using uh, that do seem to have some thermal pads on them and stuff to provide a bit of additional cooling. Beyond that, a lot of the continued mainstays from uh, MSI's production labs, uh, such as steel reinforced slots for the DIMMs, steel reinforced slots for the PCI Express, Mystic lighting support as well for RGB LED fanatics, dual gigabit LAN 
solution, as well as Audio Boost 4 with the Humic 2 Plus. Uh, and then, again, LGA 2066 socket with support for the Intel Core X series processors. Uh, so imagine connecting up five M.2 devices to this all at the same time. And then imagine dropping that motherboard right on Linus's head. That would be amazing. That would be an amazing experience. Let's see if we can catch Linus breaking something on the fly here. I think that would be incredible. More, more, uh, Everyone's it's MSI has now moved into crisis mode. Like, oh no, Linus is touching our stuff. Yeah. No, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Cool. Let's move on to the XT99 Gaming M7ACK. Uh, again, you have multi M.2 slots. It looks like there's a total of two on this particular board. They've also added a U.2. One of the things I really like that they've been adding is USB 3.1 Gen 2. What is going on down here? Damn it! Come on now! Linus has literally busted out a spudger, which he's using to, to break the MSI motherboards on the fly. This is unprecedented. Come off, right? Usually, usually Linus is capable of breaking motherboards and other parts that vendors have on display without the use of tools, but this time he's brought tools along to help make the job more efficient. Okay, and I think okay, the fans okay, don't really okay. appreciate that. USB 3.1 Gen 2 is like all over these boards. Again, thanks to all those PCIe lanes, tons of connectivity available. They're also uh, including the front panel connector here that uh, is currently, from my understanding, available from case manufacturers such as uh, Bit Phoenix, Cooler Master, and uh, I believe NZXT, uh, NZXT as well is working on those. This one, of course, also has the RGB LED accent lighting scattered around. A uh, bit of a darker sort of theme on this one, all black, but still looks quite nice. And I'm not sure what's good. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. And this, this one also has some M.2 uh, covers right there. And this little folding thing that connects to the chipset heatsink, again, with some thermal pads on the back that goes over and covers the M.2. And then it keeps your 960 Pro nice and cool and doesn't want it to throttle. That is super handy. Here's the X299 Gaming Pro Carbon AC. AC means it has integrated Wi-Fi, of course. Uh, looks like some, some more basic heat shields on this one going on. I'm sure we'll have gamers Nexus test those out eventually. Uh, but again, a nice looking aesthetic overall. I like the kind of black theme with some uh, what, uh, some silver accents going on there. Hey, dim slots, of course. I like, I like to have that with these X299 boards. VR ready, VR boost. Um, honestly, any of these boards should all be VR ready. Uh, the Turbo U.2 down there as well. So a couple M.2s and a U.2 down there towards the bottom. Uh, and again, you do have that USB 3.1 Gen 2 header. Two more motherboards from this line here. I'm not going to dwell on these too much, but you got the X299 Tomahawk, keeping uh, more of sort of a military aesthetic. Uh, I, I like that they don't have any camouflage on this. It looks a lot cleaner, I think. Um, but again, you're going to get a lot of the same features that you have with the other boards, just due to the fact that it is support for the Intel Core X series of CPUs. But again, eight DIMM slots. I like that pretty much all of these boards have eight DIMM slots. Uh, and then again, tons of M.2 support as well as a U.2 there. Uh, here's the X99 SLI Plus. This is going to be a little bit more of a budget board, so you're not going to see quite as much steel reinforcement. You do have a couple steel reinforced slots there for your primary and secondary PCI Express slots. But again, Tons of connectivity, and every one of these boards I've shown you so far, so far has on the I.O. at least one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port, uh, and they should also have a Type-A. So as usual, guys, MSI has way too much stuff for me to cover in this video, but I did want to point out a couple things they have over here on the desktop side. We've seen some of their smaller form factor integrated desktops, uh, like at CES and that kind of thing. This is a new uh, sort of a mid-tower chassis. Uh, they're calling it the Infinite A series. And uh, basically what you're going to get is a bunch of M MSI hardware installed here. Uh, you have the ability to support Optane with the newer versions of these. It will support KB Lake processors. You can have GPUs going all the way up to something like a GTX 1080 in there. And they've uh, done some unique things to help with configuration. Uh, for instance, the graphics card has a riser card so they can position it sideways like this, uh, which helps prevent it uh, from flexing and uh, causing the motherboard strain. And especially useful for shipping, actually, uh, keeping it sideways like that. I'm not sure. If these are going to come with the with, with the uh, MSI Dragon, uh, but of course these are going to be available in a wide variety of different configurations, and they even have included stuff like VR support via a VR header, an uh, HDMI header, I should say, on the front of the chassis. Also, of course, uh, you got their Mystic Lighting support in there, and uh, seems like it might be a good option for you folks out there who are interested in not building your own PC but actually uh, getting a PC that's pre-made. They also showed me this little guy over here, which uh, I found. 
fascinating. You guys may or may not. We'll see how it goes. It's a product in development. They're not sure if and when it's going to come to market, but it's called the MSI Gaming Storage Card. Basically, to circumvent some of the limitations that you have with setting up RAID configurations, depending on your platform and how you're connecting it, of course, uh, they have this little card, sits in a PCIe slot. It's got this little panel here, and inside you can see a couple M.2 slots. There's actually another M.2 on the other side, uh, and there's a hardware RAID controller that's integrated. All this is to say that when you have the proper M.2 devices in there that are fast enough, you can get up to 7,200 megabytes per second. Data transmission speeds, I'm not sure if that counts for reads or writes or whatnot, but uh, it would be a very, very fast additional storage card. And guys, let's uh, close out our coverage over here at the MSI booth with a look at their Lightning GTX 1080 Ti. There it is. I don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, massive triple slot design with three fans. Uh, it has an RGB sort of a trim accent line around, along the top. And they have it set up here with one of their X299 boards, the X299 Gaming Pro Carbon that I already kind of showed you guys. But it has a special thing it can do as well, which is that uh, depending on what version you get, you might get these little add-on pieces that come in gold and silver trim. And uh, you can swap those out to match up with uh, the motherboard along the I.O. and along the uh, sound on the side and on the chipset heatsink. And that will make things match. So whether you want silver or whether you want gold, you can get any of them. And uh, as far as the Lightning card, I don't know too much as far as the additional specs, but I do know that it has three 8-pin PCI, uh, PCI Express graphics power connectors, which is crazy. And uh, I have to imagine that Jay's going to review this. I don't know if they're going to send me one, but maybe I can talk him into it. Well, guys, that's going to wrap it up for my coverage of the MSI booth. I know this has been a kind of longer video, but they, again, have tons and tons of stuff here. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to be back with more Computex 2017 coverage coming at you really soon. One final thanks to my sponsors, MSI, of course, as well as G-Skill, Cooler Master, Tesoro, and EVGA. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.